Welcome back, my friends. I'm Nancy. This is Mandy. And we have found 52 promises of God, and we're going to do one every week. So we're going to start with the first one and the best promise of all, John 3.16, a promise of salvation. John 3.16, you probably know it. Let's say it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. But I want to go back and read the verse before that because it's really important. Verse 14 says, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. So when Moses was leading the Israelites through the desert for 40 years, they got to a point where they were complaining. And so God sent snakes to bite them to kind of turn their hearts back around. The remedy for that was for Moses to create a bronze snake and put it on a pole. And he set that pole in the middle of the camp. And anyone who looked at that would be saved and healed. And that is just a forerunner, a picture of what Jesus did for us. They put him on a cross, raised him up in the middle of the city. And then, as now, any of us who look at that cross and believe that Jesus is God's son, that he can forgive us, and that his death paid the price, if we believe that, then we can also be saved. Then there's the famous verse 16 that we read, but verse 17 is good. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, But whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Okay, and I'm going to show you how Ephesians 3.18 kind of mixes in with John 3.16. Here we go. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know that this love surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all fullness of God. I have a couple notes in here I want to read. Here it says, the power of Christ in me is greater than the pressure of troubles around me. And also, his love has no limits, and it's beyond my knowledge. And finally, to go with verse 20 there, he goes beyond what I ask. He is so good. Okay, so John 3.16 and this verse in Ephesians, for God so loved the world, that shows how wide it is. His love is as wide as the whole world because God so loved the world that he gave. That shows how long it is. He gave and gave and gave and gave till everyone could accept Jesus. His love is so, so long. I love it. Then we have how high that anyone who believes, as long as we believe in God, he will accept us. That's how high his love is. And then we have how deep. How deep does that love go? It goes so deep that he's going to offer us eternal life. Isn't that cool? So again, God's love is wide. God so loved the world. God's love is long that he gave his only son. God's love is high that whoever believes in him, God's love is deep, shall have eternal life. Isn't that cool? So again, he's saying, I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. So John 3.16 is a wonderful verse. You really should memorize that one. I don't usually shit on people, but I'm going to say you should memorize that one. Have it in your heart because it's a great verse. But I like to read a little bit of commentary. This one here is from Pastor Tony Evans. Let's see what he has to say. Here we have perhaps the most well-known verse in the Bible, God loved the world of people, and his love was not merely sentimental. Rather, it prompted him to take action. And that really shows love, right, when you take action. It's one thing to think about, oh, I'm going to help someone, but if you really love them, you're going to take action. God the Father gave his one and only Son as a substitute for sinful human beings. He would die in their place, bearing their sins. But salvation from sin through the Son of God requires faith. Everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. 
When you trust in Jesus alone as your personal sin bearer, divine judgment is removed and eternal life is freely given. I love that line. Divine judgment is removed and eternal life is freely given. I mean, don't you want (laughs) divine judgment removed? I know I do. I have sinned a lot in my life. I mean, you know, try to do the right thing, but we're all sinful. And it's just so nice to know that because I believe that God sent his son and that his son did take my place, that that judgment will be removed from me. And so this is one of the best promises. And that's why I wanted to start with this one, because it is the most important promise. All the other promises hang on this. We need to believe that Jesus is God's son and that he did come to die. And I hope today that if you've never believed in him, that you stop right now and I will pray for you. Just repeat after me, God, I'm a sinner. I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that he died on the cross for me. I believe that because he died and rose again, that I am forgiven of all my sin. I believe in you and want to be your child and have eternal life. It's that easy. If you meant that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. And we have more promises to share with you. But I wanted to start with John 3, 16 because it's the best promise ever. So come back again. We're going to do one promise a week. So all week long, I want you to think about this promise. And a year from now, we will have gone through 52 promises. And if you memorize them all, think how much that will help your heart and have faith and just strength for every day. So come back next week for another promise from God. I hope you enjoyed another promise as together we look at 52 promises from God's Word. And I would love to hear from you. You can contact me through my website, Nancy Joy to You. That's Nancy, J O Y, the number two, the letter U.com. Have a blessed day.